This video will look at the infrared and Raman activity of vibrational modes of polyatomic molecules and showing how we can figure out whether the vibrational modes are IR or Raman active just based off the character tables of our given molecule. Okay, so to start off we're going to be looking at water. Water is in the C2V point group. There are four operations here. E, C2, rotation around this axis by 180 degrees. Sigma V, uh, which bisects the bond angle here. Sigma V prime, which is the molecular plane. There are four EREPs, A1, A2, B1, and B2. And there's this additional section of the character table that I have for the first time now, which you'll notice on the Jacobs website. Let's see if, for example, I go to the C2V character table. You'll notice this information over here in linear functions, rotations, and quadratic functions, etc., that we're going to be up using for the first time. So I have that information from Jacobs uh, transcribed down there, and that'll be helpful to us in this endeavor. All right, so we want to figure out uh, how many vibrational modes uh, in this molecule are going to be IR and or, and or Raman active. How many peaks do we expect to see in the Raman and IR spectra for this molecule? And we can do that just using symmetry and group theory. So I have three atoms, H1, H2, and O. Each of them can displace themselves or move in the X, Y, and Z directions. And we're going to look at what is the character of each of those individual dimensions of motion under each of these uh, operations. So our reducible representation is going to be the following. Under the identity, all of them stay the same. So x, y, and z here stay the same. x, y, and z there stay the same. x, y, and z there stay the same. So that's 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9 total uh, objects that we're looking at. They all stay the same under the identity. So this is a nine-dimensional reducible representation. All right, under C2, um, this Z stays the same. This X becomes minus itself. This Y becomes minus itself. So that's 1 minus 1 minus 1, so negative 1 thus far. And here, this X, Y, and Z of this atom gets moved over here. And this x, y, and z of this atom gets moved over here. So all of the displacements of h1 become the displacements of h2 and vice versa. They don't have any of the, the character of themselves left after that operation. So these all have characters of 0 because they're moving to a different atomic center. So this is negative 1 plus 0 plus 0. So the total character of these nine objects under C2 is minus 1. Under sigma v, sigma v is this plane which bisects the two atoms here. Um, z, o, z is going to stay the same. O, x stays the same. O, y switches sign, gets reflected through, so that's 1 plus 1 minus 1, or positive 1. All three of these get reflected over here. All three of these get reflected over here, so that's a 0 for all of these and these. They become a different atomic center. So we get a positive 1 plus 0 plus 0, gives us a character of 1 under sigma v. And under sigma v prime, that's the plane of the molecule, each atom's z stays the same, each atom's y stays the same, each atom's x switches sign. So in each atomic center, that's 1 plus 1 minus 1, so it's a plus 1 from each atomic center. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 1, gives us 3. So the character of these nine objects under sigma v prime is 3. So now we can apply the reduction formula to uh, a reducible representation of 9 minus 1, 1, 3. If you use the reduction formula as, def as defined in the video on uh, determining irreducible representations, you'll get the following, that for a1, our coefficient is 3. For A2, our coefficient is 1. For B1, our coefficient is 2. And for B2, our coefficient is 3. In each case, we're taking uh, 1 divided by the total order of the group, which is the sum of the, how many symmetry operations there are, 4. And then we're taking the character of our reducible representation under that operation times 
the character of that irrep under that operation and summing the result. So we get 12 over 4, 4 over 4, 8 over 4, and 12 over 4. So our reducible representation in terms of its irreducible components is 3a1 plus a2 plus 2b1 plus 3b2. Okay, so this is our total reducible representation. So now the question is, how much of this is vibrations and how much of it is other stuff? So what we can do here is use our character table and determine what is the reducible representation of our translations and of our rotations? Because any net displacement of the molecule in the z, y, or x direction doesn't contribute to vibrations. Any net rotation of the molecule doesn't contribute to vibrations as well. Um, we just want what's left over, which is the vibrations, the internal displacements of the molecule that don't change the center of mass. All right, so what we do is in the character table, we look for, in translations, we look for the rows that have Z, X, and Y. So displacement in, of the molecule in the Z direction is an A1 in character, and the X is B1 in character, and in the Y is B2 in character. So the reducible representation of translations is A1 plus A, plus, sorry, A1, plus B1, plus B2, X plus Y plus Z. These three rows sum up to 3, minus 1, 1, 1. I'm just adding A1, plus B1, plus B2. For rotations, we're looking for the values in the character tables like RZ, RY, and RX. As you see here in Jacobs, RZ, RY, RX. All right, so that's A2 plus B1 plus B2. Those rows add up to 3, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So our total representation, reducible representation here is translations plus rotations plus vibrations. Those are all the different ways the molecule can move. So our vibrational reducible representation is equal to gamma minus gamma rot minus gamma that should say trans. Let's fix that. There we go. Okay, so gamma vib equals gamma minus gamma rote minus gamma trans. So taking 9 minus 1, 1, 3, and subtracting from it 3 minus 1, 1, 1, and 3 minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, would give us 3, 1, 1, 3. Or additionally, we could say that taking 3a1 plus a2 plus 2b2 plus 3b2 and subtracting from it a1 B1, B2, A2, B1, and B2, we would get that our reducible representation of our vibrational degrees of freedom, that its irreducible components are 2A1 plus B2. Okay, so two of our vibrational modes are A1 in character, and one of them is B2. So now, if we look over at our character table, we can determine the infrared activity and the Raman activity of those vibrational modes, whether or not they're going to show up on, whether or not they're going to show up on the uh, spectrum of, of this molecule. Okay, so a, a, an, a vibrational mode is IR active if it has the same irrep as either X, Y, or Z in the character table. It's Raman active if it has the same irrep as, as a quadratic function, x squared, y squared, z squared, xy, yz, or xz. So uh, linear functions, x, y, and z for infrared activity, quadratic functions for Raman activity. So in this case, um, a1, it has z, and it has x squared in addition to other things. So the A1 modes are going to be both infrared and Raman active. For the B2 mode, B2 is Y, and it's also YZ. So it's going to have infrared activity because of Y and Raman activity because of YZ. So all three modes are going to be infrared active, <clears throat> and all three modes are going to be Raman active. 
So just from the symmetry of this molecule, we've been able to determine that it has three vibrational modes that will be both IR active and Raman active. In this case, there are only four EREPs for C2V, so it was pretty likely that each of them was going to be both IR and Raman active. Um, the A2 is the only thing that doesn't have one of the linear functions, and every EREP has at least one of the quadratic functions, so everything is going to be Raman active. But the more EREPs you get, the less likely that becomes. When you have D2H and there are eight EREPs, or D6H and there are, I forget, I think 12 of them, you know, the more EREPs you get, the more complicated thing, things become, and the less likely it becomes for them to be IR active. So in this case, um, we've used uh, the reduction formula and this type of procedure to decompose this reducible representation of all of our atomic displacements into figuring out the reducible representation of all of our vibrational modes and figuring out their IR and Raman activity. And lastly, as a bonus for those of you that have stayed this far in the video, is that basically all of this can be done automatically for you on the Jacobs website. So if I have my gamma of 9 minus 1, 1, 3, if I go to the C2V character table and then I scroll down here, notice they have the dimensionality, uh, sorry, they have the order of the group listed there for you in case that's difficult to arrive at. Simple for this point group, but harder for others. Um, down here, if I substitute in the values that I had, 9 minus 1, 1, 3, I believe if that's correct, 9 minus 1, 1, 3, yes. And then I say submit. They'll actually calculate for me that this representation can be reduced to 3A1 plus A2 plus 2B2 plus 3B2, which is exactly what I have here. So they could have saved me a lot of work there, depending on how much work my professor wants me to show or whether I'm you know, doing this as a learning exercise or I just want the answer. In, additional, in addition, I can, if I say gamma 3n, they can subtract out the translational and rotational contributions for me. So if I have these coefficients there, they can subtract out the parts that I mentioned from the rotations and the, and the translations and note that my vibrations end up being that value, which I specified down at the end. So that can be a nice double check if you need to show work. It can be a nice uh, quick way to arrive at the answer if you don't. Uh, either way, uh, it is a nice resource to be able to use if desired.